There's not a person in Ontario who hasn't been touched by the loss of jobs, the lack of available jobs, and the absolute devastation that we're seeing in large parts of the Ontario economy. Over the past few months, the bad news that seemed to be happening somewhere else far away is now very much here. It's real, and it has people scared for themselves, for their parents, for their kids, and for their businesses. It's like nothing we've seen in a whole lifetime, and yet to listen to Mr. McGuinty and watch the inaction of his government, you'd think we were pretty close to business as usual. Despite the widespread impact of this economic crisis, the McGuinty Liberals still don't get it. They have deliberately spent as much time of this legislative session as they could on cell phone bans, ill-considered driver's legislation, the Apology Act, and numerous other initiatives which just don't rank up there with the economy when it comes to the minds of the people we serve. What is imperative right now is to fix the Ontario economy, nothing more, nothing less. That's why over the past few weeks our party has put forward a number of practical, sensible ideas to help Ontario's struggling economy. For example, we held an economic round table in September and out of that some of the speakers there being the very same advisors the government uh, retains to advise them, we produced a number of ideas from tax reductions to regulatory reform to research and development. We've suggested real restraint starting with a hiring freeze, a real hiring freeze real administrative spending reductions and a salary freeze at the top to set an example. We called for more effective training programs. They have dozens and dozens that don't get any money actually invested in getting people trained. We called for more flexible apprenticeship ratios. We called for a new tourism initiative, a Buy Ontario initiative, accelerated tax reductions. We've put forward a large number of these ideas that we think would help. We don't pretend and never did that any of them are quick-fix solutions on their own, but they are ideas nonetheless, something the Liberals seem to be in very short supply on. What I find disheartening is that for every idea we've put forward, all we've received back from Mr. McGuinty is silence. Not once have they said, that's interesting, why don't we sit down and talk about that? Or oh, that's interesting, we'll look into pursuing that and maybe see if there's something we could do in that area. Mr. McGuinty has totally ignored my letter suggesting select committees just as he has ignored every other suggestion that we've made. I'm not angry or disappointed that he's ignoring our suggestions. I am angry and I am disappointed like a lot of other people in this province that he has no ideas of his own to offer. No action plan whatsoever. We have seen nothing from this Liberal government during the time of this session to fix Ontario's economy. Nothing to stave off the very real recession that we, people across this province, are facing today. I am angry and I am disappointed that he doesn't show in any way, shape or form any sense of urgency about the economic disaster that many families and businesses in this province are experiencing right now, today. People living in Ontario are scared. In many cases, for the first time in their lives, they're scared for their jobs, scared about not having enough money to retire, scared about the declining value of their investments. They don't see any real action or even any real recognition from Dalton McGuinty. He sticks with the failed programs and policies brought forward almost a year ago when everybody in Ontario knows that the world has changed a thousand times since then, just since then. What Ontarians need now is some hope. They need hope and a plan. They need a plan for jobs, a plan for the economy, a plan for the future, of this province. Ontario can do better. They need to see a sense of urgency from Mr. McGuinty which reflects the fear and the pain that families and businesses are experiencing. I've continued to travel the province for the last several months. I sat down with the union workers in the Canadian Auto Workers Hall in St. Thomas. These were people who are going to lose their jobs very soon in the truck plant there. I sat in the kitchen of a struggling hog farmer in Oxford County saw the devastating poverty when I visited Fort Severn. I listened to the frustration just last week of the home builders in London and the tourist operator in Renfrew County this past summer who spends a third of his time, he told me, dealing with government regulation and that's stifling his ability to protect and to create new jobs. I don't think Mr. McGuinty is meeting these people or people like them these days. I don't think he really understands how desperate they are for some leadership 
or for any sense of urgency on his part about what they're going through just now. Let's see a plan. Let's work together on it. There's a novel concept for Mr. McGinty. Let's see some action now. Not three months from now, not three weeks from now. Let's see some action now. There's still time to see some action, to give people some hope. Ontario can do so much better if we work together. I came here to improve the way people regard politicians by trying to behave differently and by getting things done. I think that's what the people have the right to expect and I don't intend to let them down because I think Ontario can do better.